Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amelia and this is Amelia Budgets and thank you so much for tuning in. I post new budgeting related videos twice every week. That's usually on Mondays and then again on Fridays. So if that is content that you think you might be interested in, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified for when I post new videos. It really, really helps out my channel. So anyways, yeah, today I am filming my January budget closeout. So yeah, I just film these videos every month to see what is left over because if you aren't already aware. I am a weekly salaried employee, but I actually budget monthly. And then what I do with whatever money I have left over at the end of the month, because I am a zero-based budgeter, but I don't plan to be a zero-based budgeter. I essentially just zero out my budget at the end of the month. So basically whatever money I have left at the end of the month, what I used to do was put 100% of that money towards an extra debt payment. But right now what I'm doing is actually putting part of it towards an extra debt payment and then part of it towards a savings goal because I do really wanna try my best to get a month ahead on my bills. So anyways, yeah, let's get started. So the first thing that I have here is my salary. Cause again, as I mentioned, I am a salaried employee and I am paid weekly. When I set this budget up, I didn't factor in the fact that I did qualify for like a yearly, um, just like company wide raise. I wasn't sure if I was going to get this because I got a raise back in September that was more performance based. So my actual salary then for the week month of January ended up being $3,268. And I actually did all the calculations already because I wanted to make this video just not too super long. So that ended up being $76 more than I thought I was going to make, which was awesome. Um, next I have my bonus. So I listed out this line because I knew I was qualified for a bonus that was going to come either in January or February. I didn't want to budget for the amount because I really didn't know how much it was going to be. Um, but my bonus ended up being like $1,200. But when you took out taxes, it ended up being $798, which I mean is a lot to take out in taxes, but honestly, I was super happy with how much it ended up being because I'm going to use this money to put towards the tires that I need to buy in April. So if you've not watched my videos before, I had to buy new winter tires back in um, November, but I also need new non-winter tires, like just regular tires, and I'll probably need to get those in either April or early May. Um, so I'm needing to save about $1,000 for those. So because I didn't budget anything for that, I was $789 over budget, or not over budget, like I made that much extra, which is nice. I want these numbers to be in green. And then finally, um, I always list out a line item for other in case I do have any other income that I'm getting for the month, but I don't have any other side hustles or anything. Like I don't have any other sources of income, but I just list it out just in case. So it was actually $0. So there was no difference there. So the total income then that I had for the month of January was $4,057, which was really nice, which ended up being a total of $865 more than I expected it to be, which is awesome. So next I have my fixed expenses and fixed expenses for me are essentially just like my bills. These are the things that come out every month at around the same time. And I, they can vary in the amount. So like some months they might be higher or lower, but for me, yeah, fixed expenses are the things that I have bills for in comparison to my variable expenses, where if I was a cash budgeter, these would likely be my cash envelopes. But yeah, that's how I do variable versus fixed. So the first fixed expense that I have is my rent and I budgeted $1,200 and that was exactly right. So there was no difference there. My hydro was, I budgeted $70, which truthfully is quite high. Um, my my hydro usually comes up closer to $70 in like the summer months because if I'm not mistaken, my like house is heated by heat, which is actually um, heat and water are both included in my rent um, comparison to hydro, which would be like air conditioning, like hydro is electricity. So usually in the winter months, my hydro is less and then in the summer months, it's more. Um, so my hydro ended up being $41 this month. So that means that's a positive difference of plus $29 there, which is awesome. I always love when you see the green. Next, I have my internet and my internet was $60. Um, so there was no difference there. The one thing that I did want to point out when it came to my internet, I was working from home a lot more in the month of January than I was 
before that and I still didn't go over my internet and a large reason why that was was because I changed my phone plan back in November so my new phone plan has a lot more data than I had before and it's also less money so I don't think truthfully going forward I'll be going over my internet anymore so yeah I'm really happy with that so $60 for my internet um, finally I have my tenants insurance and my tenants insurance it was actually $25 so there was no difference that is it for all my household expenses just as a note as I just did mention before both water and gas are included in my rent um, and then also too I've seen a lot of people that have like different lines for like trash and sewer and stuff that's not something that I pay because I rent I believe where I live that's actually like sort of lumped in with um, property taxes but again I'm not really sure because I don't own a home I just pay my rent and my hydro and that's it Anyways, the next thing that I have is my car insurance and my car insurance is $120. So no difference there. My phone bill on the other hand did increase. So my phone bill is now $59 a month. And again, if you didn't watch my February budget setup, you'll have missed me talking about my phone bill. So I did upgrade my phone. So I used to have an iPhone 8. I now have an iPhone 12 mini and I also got AirPods. That together cost an additional $17 a month, but I was able to to drop my phone plan from a $50 plan to a $40 plan and I was able to get a $10 a month bill credit for 15 months I think so ultimately even though I got a new phone and airpods my phone bill only increased by two dollars every month so yeah that's a it's a negative difference but it's not too much I did ask you guys what you thought of about whether or not I should be including this on my debt because the phone and the AirPods technically, if I were to buy them retail, would have been around $1,200, but I'm getting so many subsidies for that, that I didn't really think personally that I should be including that $1,200 on my debt. And I did actually do a poll on like just the community tab of YouTube and over a hundred people responded, which was amazing. Like, thank you guys so much for responding to that. But the majority of people did say to just leave it as a fixed expense. And honestly, that's what I was leaning towards because truthfully, before I started budgeting, I never would have even considered that as a debt. I'm not someone that upgrades my phone all the time like I'm pretty safe with my devices like knock on wood so yeah um, I'm just going to leave this as a fixed expense I'm not going to include it as my debt unless of course I decide to upgrade my phone or something but yeah my phone bill is now $59 a month which again if you've been watching these videos before is still like $25 less than it used to be because it used to be 75 or not 25 $15 less than it used to be because it used to be $75 a month for my old phone with less data so yeah Next, I have Netflix and Netflix is $12, so no difference. I don't think I'm affected by the increase of price in Netflix because I have like the most basic plan. I haven't gotten an email or anything, but I don't know, maybe. Um, I also did, so yeah, no difference for Netflix. Spotify though, I did cancel Spotify. So again, I mentioned that when I did my February calendar video, um, I don't really watch or listen to a ton of music on Spotify. What I was using Spotify for was more to listen to podcasts podcasts but podcasts you have to listen to ads regardless of where you are watching your podcast so if I'm listening to it with the Apple Music pod or the Apple podcast app compared to Spotify I'm still listening to the same ads so it didn't really make sense for me to be spending ten dollars a month on something that I could be getting for free but again if I end up missing it I can just order it back like reactivate my account it's not a big deal because like yeah I'm not getting like a discount or anything for having it so it doesn't matter so yeah I saved ten dollars for that um, iCloud was $2, so no difference there. Um, my credit card minimums, I actually put $405 towards my credit card minimums, which again is like a good thing. I just didn't do that when I had originally set up this budget, um, which again is fine. One of my subscribers had actually recommended that I round my debt payments, so I just I did that, <laughs> and now I'm paying a little bit more as a minimum. Um, the one thing though on my fixed expenses that went like way way over budget was my sinking funds technically, but again it's a good thing because I got so close to the amount that I needed for my tires, I decided to just fully fund my tires. So I transferred a full thousand dollars into my like emergency fund savings account, um, just so that I know I have that there. Um, and then I also did $250 for my regular sinking funds. And then again, if you missed my January, um, what is it? My January sinking fund and savings video, 
you'll know that I'm now doing dedicated savings every week. So every time I get a paycheck in January, so every Friday, I'm putting $20 towards dedicated savings so that hopefully by the end of the year, that will add up to around $80, which will be nice. So, or sorry, not $80. It was $80 this month. It'll be around $1,000 for the year. So that means that my technically my sinking funds and savings ended up being $13.30. So that means I was technically over budget there by $830, but it's not really that, like it's not like I spent all that money. Um, it's more towards like savings and sinking funds. So anyways, if you add all of these up, that is a total of $3,254. And that is a difference of $798 which, oh, sorry, that should have been in red, my bad, <laughs> negative, 798. All right, anyways, the next thing I have are my variable expenses, and if you watch my week four check-in, you'll know that, like, overall, I did pretty well for my variable expenses. So groceries, I ended up spending 273, which, again, was high, but groceries have just been so expensive that it's just, I've really been struggling there. So I ended up being over budget in groceries, again, by $23. Um, dining out, I spent a lot less this month. So I only spent $28 on dining out, which honestly, I'm not surprised because Ontario, you could not dine in for all of the month of January. It started on January 31st. So hopefully I'll be able to go out something and do something in February. But yeah, so I was $22 under budget there. Gas, I was way, way under budget. I only spent $50 in gas, even though gas was crazy expensive all month. That was really just because I wasn't driving. Like I was working from home more than I normally do. And then miscellaneous, I ended up spending $97 in miscellaneous. So, oh no, that's not red, that's green. <laughs> so I was under budget by $3 and miscellaneous which again I was very happy with um I did again I didn't really feel like I spent a whole ton of money in miscellaneous but clearly I spent almost everything I had so anyways the total then for my variable expenses were 448 dollars which actually kept put me under budget for the month for 152 dollars which is kind of crazy when you think about because like if you take away gas it was literally like I was two dollars under budget for the month which is kind of cool all right. Anyways, now what I do is I bring down all of my amounts and I figure out how much money I have left over. So my income, instead of being 3192 was actually 4057 um, My fixed expenses, instead of being 2458 or for 56 sorry, I actually spent $3,254. Again, a lot of that was for my tires, but honestly, I'm so happy that I was able to do that because... Um, having to save an extra $250 a month for like January, February, March, and April, February, March, or January, February, and March are all only four paycheck months for me. So that extra $250 really took a chunk out of my like spending, um, or just like my savings and everything. So like, I'm very happy that I was able to fully fund that. So anyways, yeah, $3,254 again, way over budget, but that's fine. Um, and then for variable spending, I only spent $448. So if you take $4,057 and subtract $3,254 and $448, what you have left over then is $355. And again, normally what I would do is I would put that as an extra debt payment, but again, going forward until I am a month ahead on my bills, I am going to be splitting this between an extra debt payment and a month ahead. So what I might do given this number is I might do like a hundred fifty dollars towards my month ahead and then like two oh five towards my debt. Honestly, I'm not totally sure. I'm going to go in and like check my credit card balances and like see what I kind of want to do here. But yeah, 355. It's again, I would have loved to be able to put all of this towards my debt, but I really do need to focus on savings. I just, I learned that when I did my, um, uh, my essential versus non-essential spending. It's just something that I really need to prioritize. So anyways, yeah, that is it for today. Thank you again, you guys, so much for tuning in. Um, my next video is going to be up on Monday and that will be my January or my February debt overview. So you'll find out exactly actually how much I was able to put towards my debt and how much I'm going to do my savings. So anyways, yeah, I hope you all have an amazing weekend and I will talk to you again on Monday. Goodbye, everyone.